want to get this early for you in October because I got a bunch of other Halloween stuff we're going to do. Some other figures and stuff like that. So, um, I wanted to get this one up first so you could make one if you wanted or make a few. I imagine this won't be the last one I'm going to make. I still got my mom and my sister once they see them. They're going to be like, I want one. You know how it is. Okay, so basically I just outlined my facial structure on there. Just so I know where it's going to be and where it's going to fall. And when I start carving the top of the hat and stuff like that. Um, you know, it's not going to look exactly like this, but, you know, it doesn't have to. It's just a, it's just something to get me started and get me going. All right, so let's carve a little bit. Um, just start rounding that hat down. Got a lot of wood to take off. And I got some nice, some nice good basswood here from Heineke. take all the hard edges off start rounding it into your into your pattern and I'm probably not gonna carve this whole thing on camera but I will show you my progress different stages so you can see because every this is really actually a simple carve even a beginner should carve be able to carve this with no problem once you got your uh, once you got your piece all set up it was there's a few other steps we got to do and that I would rather capture all that on video for you because you can anybody can pretty much carve a pumpkin you don't even have to worry about shapes with a pumpkin there's so many different shapes of a pumpkin and they don't some of them aren't even perfectly round you know, if I wanted this to be, you know, if I want to put a bigger hat on or you want a bigger, fatter pumpkin, you know, you just use a wider piece of wood. Um, but I'm just working with what I had. And this piece, I got another big old block over there, but I didn't really want to cut it out if I had this piece to work with. So work with what you got, you know. I would say you could do that. You could carve this actually without a bandsaw but you and then maybe you can figure out a way to get just the hole drilled in it and maybe get it cut in half for you you could get two one by p one by one or one inch thick pieces and glue them together you know work with two of those that's one way you could do it um and then peg it and then drill you know drill your hole in there um, you could do that with a hand drill if you had a hand drill just uh, secure it down as you can see when when I was cut drilling mine out that basswood soft it wants to it wants to grab the blade it don't want to cut through like a hardwood would on those or on the bit so I had to resort to clamping it down and the first one I just hung on to with a pair of gloves on. But you could actually do this with a, with just a drill and an inch and a half spade bit. If you got a drill, go up to your hardware store. They sell those spade bits you can buy a set of them or you can buy a one bit at least in my hardware store you can little hometown hardware store but you could do it with just one inch piece one inch thick I 
the other thing I would say is if you do um, cut your two inch piece in half don't mess with the inside don't try to sand it don't try to clean it up or nothing leave it rough because if you do it's it might not seal seam together real good with just that saw blade in there just between it it's gonna put that same groove on both sides of the wood and uh, that way you know your piece is going to fit back together once you got it pegged just exactly like you split it in half um, if you use two if you use two fresh pieces um, one inch pieces just make sure that uh, they fit together real nice but the clamps if you clamp it will pretty much pull it together and Clamps are pretty cheap. I think I got mine at like Harbor Freight for a couple bucks. But I do a lot of other woodworking stuff, so so the clamps were worth it for me to have. And um, I use them for a lot of things, not just gluing stuff together, but holding stuff together. I use them pretty good, pretty much. So sure if you bought a couple of them you would find some other uses for them especially holding things together that you're trying to work on but basically we're just going to ground start we're going to round this hat down take it back some and we know we want a little brim there so we got to take it back some and i'm just leaving my cartoon clip art on here until i get get down to the front got a lot of wood to move off the top of that but I wanted to get this video out like I said so you guys could get started making them for yourself or your wife or your husband beaver beaver craft knife here and chucking off a bunch of wood
Okay, guys, I'm going to work on this top of this hat, and I'll bring you back. And when we get uh, get down to close to being done with the top of the hat, um, I'm not going to bore you with sitting here watching me carve all this wood off of here. I'll bring you back in certain stages so we can have a nice video without having it be three, four hours long. Because it did take me some time to carve all this. Um, so, with that being said, I'll bring you back and uh, we'll be closer on the hat. So we're working with this end grain. This is all pretty much a whole piece of end grain going across here. So it's rough. 
and in spots it's hard to get out so you probably seen me a little bit changing around different tools sometimes you just got to keep working to you with different things till you find the right tool this is a tough area because we're trying to put a swoop in here we're trying to swoop this over and we're working across the grain some spots of the grain are a little a little more prominent so they're a little harder um, but you just keep playing around till you find the right tools that takes it out and it might be more than one tool you might just have to keep going around with different tools uh, for one I'm working behind the camera so normally I would bring it closer to my body where I could actually put some pressure on it and get it out the other thing is is you can use a little bit of a little bit of alcohol and water to soften it up you don't want to get too much though because it'll start breaking down your wood and get all fuzzy but let it stick in there sit in there for a minute and then sometimes you just find the right tool and it just peels it out of there so i kind of wanted to show you because um working on the hat and last night i really got to knock some out on this top because i had actually had it up against my body and can bring it closer to me so that is a little bit of a, a hamper um but you know i wanted to show you this end grain because this end grain is tough it's you can see all my knives are sharp but this end grain just getting in there and we're adding a little swoop and we're meeting the grain grain coming down grain going across so when we come into there sometimes sometimes you can just use chisels to kind of clean it up and get the right chisel um, that fits if you have if you have some chisel tools you know you can get those in there and kind of clean that back up with the tool the other technique is you can roll your knife so I had this knife and as you were watching probably I was rolling it coming in and rolling it up that way I can keep that little swoop going up without marring that grain all up right there where they meet so I just roll in roll up and then uh, working on your ends you know sometimes you can just come across the end like that and peel it off across but it's just all determines what you're doing and what you're working on and where it's at see this spot here in the middle I have to get a bigger knife or um, use a chisel and I found the uh, the flat chisel here or it's not really flat that's a uh, it's a number three got a little bit of a curve on it I found that was working really good because I can just slide it in there right in and take that top part off right there so it's just really about playing around and finding out what tools you have that will work for you in the situation that you have um, and like I said you know it's when you can hold it up against your body for different areas it just makes it so much easier uh, I'm just working straight down on the table flat table with the camera in front of me so I can't really get right up in it like I normally like to do the other one is this, uh, this swoop knife here I can come in with it and just use the different angle of the blade curvature of the blade and just work it in there but it's pretty much a, you know probably be part of the toughest part of carving it is getting this end grain out because this is a good piece of wood it's not that this is a real hard piece of wood it's just the angle that I got to come with it and the area I'm working with and the position I'm sitting in so you just play around you keep finding that you'll find out oh wow it's coming off really easy there you know and go with that for a while hopefully you can go with that until you got it all carved out when you like the way you like it um so we're gonna move on and we, we can keep on working on the hat as we get the pumpkin down but here's where we're at we got the hat it's a little different than the other one um so I changed the top a little bit and I'm 
Still got a little bit more to go in there, but I want to take this down and start getting the hat and the top of the pumpkin where it comes under the hat. Um, because I need to get a little more here. Now I could have put it on a bigger piece of wood. Um, if I wanted it to be more rounded, um, I could have, you know, used a four inch piece of wood or two two inch pieces of wood. But the, sometimes you work with what you have. And the way we'll put our stripes on there, we'll make it or our grooves. So it'll, it'll make it look more round than it really is. So, um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut in on this hat. And I already went across here where I wanted it. And peeled that part of the hat off. I want this to kind of swoop out. All right, then I'm just gonna come back and cut underneath of it. Once I get that paper off of there. Make a nice deep cut. Let's go to, this, go to this knife. I use I switch around a lot. I use a lot of different knives for different areas. It's just I don't know if it's a bad habit or not, but it works for me. So what works for you might not work for me, but works for me might not work for you. So get comfortable with what tools you're going to use. To get the job done that's all that matters okay i'm gonna come across here now and let's just take this out like this Get our stop cut. We'll just get this kind of marked out all the way around. Where we want our hat to come into our pumpkin or our pumpkin to come into our hat. a little bit pretty much I'm just wanting to get all these bandsaw marks off this hat kind of roughed out
thing now we can start rounding our pumpkin a little bit let's go ahead and get the rest of this paper off of here because we know we're just going to work with what we got left here and round this off get the glue the spray on adhesive and all over my knife blade gum it all up Once we get it rounded a little bit and we know where we're at, we can um, clean out the inside, put the finishing touches on it, clean it up a little bit. Okay, let's start taking these edges off. Start rounding it towards the face a little bit. Get all these saw marks off. Start trying to get something square to look round. By the way, I don't want to take it apart right now and carve this. I want to keep it together so everything meets. So when I glue it back together, you won't even be able to tell. Okay. Hard the back side a little bit. My goal first is just to get all that sawn off edges out of there. 
without making it look flat still so just by putting chips in there kind of gives it a round shape at least to the eye and I'll just keep working it towards all the edges so I get all the saw marks off and I'll do the same thing on the other side Okay, see, we're almost, almost somewhat round for a square hole, square peg. And work that up towards the bottom of the hat. Not too much, we don't want to get carried away. We don't want the hat look like it's sitting too high on it. We want the pumpkin to come up on into the hat. If that makes sense to you. Okay, let's work on this side a little bit. Same thing. Working towards the face, working towards the hat. Working towards the middle. That's all there is to it. Just keep doing that till you get it even and somewhat round. You can see I'm a little more flat over here than I am here. Um, but I can still take this up some more under the hat a little bit. And uh, I can still take a little more off of this to even it up. Um, but I don't know. Pumpkins ain't perfect usually. Sometimes you'll see some really good ones. Sometimes you'll see some oddball shaved ones too so don't fret it too much if you can't get it perfectly round you're working with only two inches of squareness and you got a big hole in the middle so you can't take out too much but you just keep messing with it all the way around till you get that shape you like
I could even take a little more off the back than the front and bring it, the rest of it around to the back. So there's a few ways you can make something square look look round without being perfectly round. And like I said, once we put our grooves in there, we can still do a little bit of rounding when we put our grooves in. And the grooves will make it look even more round than it is. But I'm going to move off camera and finish rounding this up where I can hold it up close. And um, I'll bring you guys back. And we'll start... Uh, We'll finish up the hat and we'll get ready to start cleaning out the inside. But pretty much just keep working your piece till you get it where you like it. And we'll come back and we'll put some grooves in it.